Lately, I've been making little to no progress on my Minecraft related projects since my previous video. I guess you could say I'm in a bit of a Minecraft rut right now. Perhaps it'd be a good idea to take a step back for a moment and focus on another project. Funnily enough, a project that I had previously shelved due to being on such a roll with Minecraft. This right here is the Thunder Tiger Phoenix GT, a two-wheel drive, one-tenth sealed nitro-powered remote control vehicle. And in today's video, I'm going to be converting this old nitro-powered RC of mine to electric with the help of 3D printing. Let's get started. So first you may ask why? Why convert this car to electric? Well, I have multiple reasons, primarily of which is just my preference for electric over nitro for my RC cars. Second comes down to me already having a similar low C vehicle with a starter box, giving me little reason to mess around with the pool starter on this thing. And third, this vehicle is basically worthless nowadays, with its dwindling parts availability not helping much either. There's no real point to me selling it, if I wasn't already doing this project I would have just salvaged some parts off of it and chucked it into the trash. So I see this project as a cool way of extending the life of this vehicle a bit. Now, before we get to any of the fun stuff, we're gonna have to get some basic parts together first. Luckily, I already have a 45 amp ESC and brushless motor combo sitting around from when I had some old low C electric cars. We're also going to need to replace the existing spur gear on this car with one that's compatible with the pinion gears I already have on hand. Luckily, once again, I already have some spur gears lying around from my old low C electric cars. And what do you know, it fits perfectly. Some screws are going to be needed too, so I hopped on Amazon and grabbed an assortment of various screws. The ones we're most interested in particular for this project are the M3 screws. Additionally, I also picked up this box of M3 square nuts. To design my models for this project, I'm going to be using Tinkercad. And for all my 3D printing in this video, I'll be using my Prusa i3 Mark III. The first thing I need to do is design a method of mounting something to the chassis of the car. Now, I could just opt to frag screws into 3D printed plastic, but I don't really have confidence in this holding up well and not easily stripping out. So instead, I'll be making use of the M3 swear nuts and screws I bought earlier to make a much more secure method of holding my future printed part to the chassis. This simple model I made right here consists of two objects, with the cylinder representing an M3 screw and the box in the middle representing a square M3 nut. I now turn this model into a cutout part that I can use elsewhere in my other models. I proceed to make a little test model, a simple cube, with my new part I just made cutting right through the center, with an added slit so I can put in the M3 square nut after 3D printing it. A few test prints later and yeah, I'd say this will work out nice. Next up, the motor mount cutout. I wanted this mount to be adjustable so I can easily, well, adjust the gear mesh between the pinion and spur gear. It was a bit difficult to model this up and while the adjustment range is much greater than needed, this cutout part will work just fine. Now I need to map out the positions of all the screw holes I can use on the chassis. I first start mapping out the set of four screw holes originally used to mount the servo throttle. These holes form a simple rectangle that will be super easy to map out with my digital caliber, and can be used as a reference for mapping out all the other screw holes. I got my first four screw holes mapped out, so I printed a simple test plate to check whether I have the holes lined up right, and of course they are a little off. I go back to adjust the distances between all the holes, printed another test, and it lined up all right. From here, I can use the four holes I've already mapped out for a reference for where all the other screw holes go. I don't really have a great method for doing this. Uh, I'm just kind of eyeballing things with my digital caliber and trying to get a decent estimate of where all the holes are supposed to be. I print out my new test plate and as expected, not all the holes are in the right positions. So I go back, make some adjustments, print, go back again, make some more adjustments, and finally, 
all the holes are now lined up perfectly. I can now proceed to making the full model, and I've got an idea of where I want everything to be. Started with modeling the battery tray, I took measurements of my two and three cell LiPo batteries and made the size of the tray a bit larger, at 146mm by 49mm. I also put in cutouts for the velcro straps that will hold the battery securely in the tray. Then I modeled the ESC mount in front, and then the motor mount in the back, making use of the cutout part I made earlier. Because of the space the transmission on this car occupies, the motor mount has to be in a specific location to allow the motor to be able to get as close to the spur gear as possible. This is important to me because I want to keep my options wide open when gearing this car. So I do some test prints of the motor mount and make some adjustments until I have it perfectly positioned. At this point most of the work is done on the model. Here I'm just putting in the finishing touches on it. Now I'm done, it's time for the first and hopefully only test print. I drop my new model into Prusa Slicer and tune my print stains to use as little POA plastic as possible. So perimeters was turned down to one, horizontal shells was turned down to three layers for both top and bottom, and infill was set to 5%. I managed to get plastic usage down to an estimated 52 grams of POA, and at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, the print should take just under five hours. Sent it off to print, and as soon as it was done, I proceeded to start cleaning up the support material on the sides of the battery tray, and yeah. If you noticed earlier, I modeled in supports myself. Rather than using support enforcers in the slicer and letting it generate the support material. I thought I could do a better job than the slicer by making my own supports. Uh, this was a mistake. After cleaning up that mess the best I could, I test fit it to the car. And yeah, I'd say this will work out pretty well. I went back to my model and proceeded to make a few changes. Now I'm ready to print the real deal. Using PETG at 0.15mm layer height this time, with 5 perimeters, 7 layers for top and bottom horizontal shells, and an infill at 10%. It's Gonna use an estimated 110 grams of plastic and take about 11 hours to print. Eleven hours later and it's done. Had a minor issue with support material on this corner causing it to lift up some during printing. Fortunately it won't be an issue. I quickly put everything together, took some shots admiring my work, and went outside to run this thing for the first time, now under electric power. Then disaster struck. Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Actually, bumped it into one of these concrete supports here. I haven't even ran a single battery through this thing, and I've already managed to break it. Well, maybe I have a spare hub carrier lying around? So I check my parts box, and I don't have a spare hub carrier. Okay, at this point I'm checking eBay, and ha <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I could get a compatible replacement part for a decent price. But... I am down for doing some more 3D modeling after finishing this part, so I decided to make my own replacement part from scratch. As expected, my first iteration sucked, but after a few iterations I finally had a good enough replacement part. Only cost me hours of my time and about 50 cents in plastic. Totally worth it.
That's it. It's done. I've successfully converted my Thunder Tiger Phoenix GT to electric. So some closing thoughts. This project was a heck of a lot of fun to do, even if it took me quite a while to do. Upon reflection though, there are some things I would do different if I was to do this project again. First and foremost, the amount of plastic wasted during prototyping. These prints didn't need any strength to them as their purpose was just test fitting. Looking back, I could have easily tuned my print settings from the get-go to use less plastic, and I could have adjusted my test models to save even more plastic as well. Second, the final part printed is really overbuilt, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'd rather have it be overbuilt than underbuilt, but this does highlight that I could have more intelligently used plastic throughout the model and reduced filament usage for the final part. Overall, I'm really quite happy with how this project turned out, and despite my displeasure over wasted plastic, this project didn't really cost me much to do. So that's it for this video. On the off chance someone watching this has this RC car, a 3D printer, and a desire to convert it to electric, I'll have a link to my electric conversion model in the description, along with a link to my replacement hub carrier model. This video took quite a while to make, so I hope it was worth the wait. Until next time everyone, I'll catch you all later. Bye. Well, can you get a straightaway and just punch it? Just one? Uh, yeah, I suppose I can try. It's full throttle. That's not very fast. No, oh, it's been like, in ideal conditions, 21 miles an hour. And actually, Let's get a uh, footage here. What's the motor temp? Yeah, it's not heating up at all, so it's still under geared. This thing has plenty of torque, it's under geared. Probably could get it up to 25 miles an hour. Listen to me.